Here we have simplifying a power of i. Now before I get into those problems, because they're actually a lot easier than they look, um, we have to discuss something first. We know that i is the square root of negative one, okay? That is i to the first power is the square root of negative one. I know that anything to the power zero, and I do mean anything to the power zero, is one, positive one. We also know that i squared is equal to negative one. Now i cubed, I'm going to inspect over here. i cubed can be written as i squared times i to the one power, right? When you add the exponents, you get three. And i squared, I know is negative one. And if I multiply negative one by i, I get negative i. So now I've established that i cubed equals negative i. i to the fourth power will equal i cubed times an extra i. And I know that i cubed is negative i times this extra i is negative i squared. And we know that i squared is negative one so a negative of negative one is the same as positive one. So now I know that i to the fourth power is positive one. i to the fifth power is i to the fourth power times i, which means since i to the fourth power is one, it's just i. Then I know i to the sixth power is i to the fourth power times i squared, which is one times negative one, which is negative one. I know that i to the seventh power is i to the fourth times i cubed. i to the fourth is one. i cubed is negative i. And so I end up with negative i. So then if you notice, this is going to repeat. So if I take this away, i to the one is just i, okay? Notice that it repeats, one i, negative one, negative i. And if I kept going with i to the eighth, i to the ninth, i to the 10th, i to the 11th, you'll notice that the same thing happens, right? And we'll just do it just to verify but eventually you'll believe me, right? <laughs> so i to the eighth is i to the fourth times i to the fourth, which is one times one, which is one. i to the ninth is i to the eighth times i, which is one times i, which is i. i to the tenth is i to the eighth times i squared, which is one times negative one, which is negative one. And then i to the eleventh is i to the eighth times i cubed, which is one times negative i, which equals negative i. And so you see that that pattern repeats. It repeats every four, um, fourth power it goes through, okay? So what I want you to notice is if I take um, i to the 13th, okay? If I were to write i to the 12th and i to the 13th here and continue the pattern, I would have one and then I would have i. So I know that this is going to equal i. But what I want you to realize is that since it repeats every four, you basically just have to figure out where you're gonna leave off of in order for you to know which value it's going to be. And how do we do that? Take your power 13 and divide it by four because that's how many times it takes to repeat. So four goes into 13 three times, which gives me 12, and so I have one left over. You don't care about how many times it goes in because that's just the number of ones that you get, right? When we had i to the fourth, we had a one. When we had i to the eighth, we had a one and a one. If you had i to the 12th, it's gonna be a one, a one, and a one. So we don't care how many ones there are. What we wanna know is what we have left over. So what you can say is that i to the 13th is actually equal to i 
to its remainder, which was 1. And we know that i to the 1 is equal to i. Okay? And so that's going to be the strategy that we use to do these problems. I'm going to take i to the 26th power and divide that power 26 by 4. I actually get 6. 4 times 6 is 24. And I have 2 left over. So i to the 26 will be equivalent to i to the second power, always the remainder, right? We don't care how many times it goes in there. I have one times one times one times one times one times one, right? So we have six ones all multiplied together, which is still gonna give me just one. So what I'm left with is this i squared here, and we know that i squared is negative one. So you only need to memorize these and then divide all of your bigger powers by four. So same thing with this one. I'm going to take 31 and divide it by four. I get seven. Seven times four is 28. When I subtract, I get three. So this will become i to the third power. And according to this chart here, that will equal negative i. Similarly here, I'm gonna take 41 and divide it by four, I get 10, that gives me 40, but I have one left over, so this becomes i to the one, which is just i. Here, if I take four into 36, that goes in nine times, which gives me 36, so I get zero. So i to the 36 equals i to the zero. And whether you're looking at the chart or you're using the concept that anything raised to the zero power, you're still going to get one. And that's how simplifying the powers of i will work. Divide by 4, and then the problem will become i raised to that remainder. And then you just need to use the, the chart to decide what you're going to get. And you're always going to get a remainder of 0 if 4 goes into it evenly, or you're going to get a remainder of 1, or you're going to get a remainder of 2, or you're going to get a remainder of 3. You will never get a remainder of four because that just means that the number went into it one more time, right? So this is the chart you wanna have down and then just remember to divide by four to get your new power before going to the chart.